Hey there, Neutron Tech crew. Today's episode features Legion Craft showing us how they work their construction magic. Everything kicks off with land surveying that needs to be spot on. Steel markers get hammered down to show exactly where each pile needs to go. Getting this right means the building's weight gets distributed properly. Mess this up and you've got problems. Those metal markers aren't randomly placed. Measuring equipment guides every single one to its exact spot. The crew then drills vertical shafts into the earth, both by hand and with machines, right where those markers sit. When the holes are ready, they move on to building the steel reinforcement cages. Then comes the concrete. They fill those prepared holes completely. After the sand gets spread out roughly where it needs to be, heavy compaction equipment rolls in to pack it down tight. Workers go over every inch with mechanical plate compactors, squeezing out air pockets and making the sand layer solid. When that's done, they roll out a polyethylene waterproof sheet right on top of that compacted surface. Bright orange PVC pipes and high-density material get positioned across the sand, creating all the drainage, waste, and ventilation channels the house will need. Steel straps and clamps lock these pipes in place so they won't shift when concrete gets poured later. Now the slab's ready for its concrete pour, and the crew keeps a close eye on everything, smoothing and leveling as they go. When that foundation has fully set and reached its strength, they're ready to start building walls. They've chosen autoclaved aerated concrete blocks for this job. AASA blocks have become really popular in home construction lately, and for good reason, they insulate well, hold up structurally, and aren't difficult to work with. Plus, they're light enough to move easily and resist fire exceptionally well, which makes them perfect for houses where families will live. Every block gets checked with spirit levels and tapped into perfect position with rubber mallets. Horizontal and vertical alignment both matter here. Small mistakes now become big problems as the wall gets taller, so the crew adjusts carefully after placing each block. As the walls climb higher, they switch from regular mortar to a thin bed adhesive system. This special cement-based glue creates incredibly thin seams, usually just one to three millimeters wide. Those narrow gaps cut down on heat transfer through the walls and boost the energy efficiency that makes AAC construction so effective. Where the structure needs extra muscle, steel reinforcement gets built right into the wall layers. Horizontal channels get carved into the tops of certain block rows, and steel rebar slides into these grooves. These reinforced layers, sometimes called ring beams or bond beams, work to spread out sideways forces and handle the stress that tries to tear things apart. This reinforcement strategy tackles AAC's weak spots head on. Sure, AAC handles crushing forces like a champ, but when you pull or twist it, not so much. The fix starts with carving shallow horizontal slots into the block surfaces, basically creating pathways for the steel to sit in. Why go with heavy-duty materials like solid concrete or reinforced brick when you don't have to? 
This mixed approach lets builders tap into AAC's best features. It's light, it insulates well, without sacrificing structural integrity. You'll notice it also gave the construction team more flexibility when sizing and placing their window and door openings. AAC blocks handle downward pressure beautifully, but here's the catch, they're vulnerable when pulled or sheared, and every opening you cut becomes a weak point. Windows and doors interrupt the natural flow path that carries weight from the upper floors down to the foundation. The wall above these openings still needs to support everything overhead and channel those forces around the gap. That's why reinforcement gets systematically worked into the block courses. The crew then shifts focus to building secondary concrete sections that connect to the main building. They dig out and flatten the ground within these marked areas, and where needed they pack down layers of sand to create a solid foundation base. In some spots they roll out polyethylene sheeting underneath to block moisture from below. After the forms are set, the fill material is in place, and the rebar is positioned. Wet concrete gets pumped into the molds. Every step involving cement gets careful oversight. You can see that throughout the process. Beyond the main structure, concrete also shapes the outdoor features that tie into the house. Now the work shifts toward getting everything ready for the roof installation. The first critical step here is rolling out a waterproofing layer across the freshly poured concrete ring beam at the top of the walls. This bitumen or polymer membrane creates a horizontal barrier that stops moisture from wicking its way up through the masonry. The wooden beams going up now are the joists that'll support the roof and ceiling, and they're being positioned to span the entire building width. They sit right on top of that ring beam, spaced out based on engineering specs that factor in how much weight the finished roof will carry. Metal hardware brackets, anchors, bolts, lag screws, locks, these timber beams down tight to the concrete ring beam below. This connection keeps everything from shifting when wind or ground movement tries to push things around. Solid blocking or diagonal bracing installed between the joists adds even more rigidity to the whole framework. The team spreads out the concentrated weight points across a broader area, which makes the structure much better at handling flexing and twisting when the roof bears down. Here's what's really interesting. These wooden pieces aren't just there to hold up the roof. They form what's essentially a load-sharing network throughout the building. Next up, things get interesting as the crew starts building the angled roof system. This part requires serious precision. Sure, it looks good, but the real payoff is how well it works with the environment. Getting those timber cuts exact and lining everything up correctly creates that triangular shape that actually stays put. When you set it up this way, the whole roof works as one connected unit that moves vertical weight downward. At the same time, any sideways pressure gets pushed down into those reinforced brick walls and the ring beams they built earlier.
At the same time, having slopes on all sides means snow and rain don't stick around, they slide right off. The way the rafters meet at the hip and ridge points matters a lot, and using those gusset plates, heavy-duty bolts, or metal brackets creates a framework that shares the load properly. These connection points stop the frame from shifting sideways or twisting out of shape. There's also those roof overhangs you can see sticking out past the walls. The rafters just keep going beyond where the wall stops, which serves a real purpose. Basically, they push water away from the building so it doesn't seep into the walls and cause problems. On top of that, those same overhangs block direct sun from hitting the windows and exterior walls when it's hot outside. If you're wondering whether that matters, it absolutely does, because keeping that heat out can dramatically cut down on how much the interior warms up. Once the underlayment goes down, they attach horizontal strips called counter battens right on top of the rafters. Then comes the OSB, those big engineered wood panels which go over certain areas to give the roof system the rigidity it needs against sideways forces. Following that step, the crew puts down the underlayment membranes and carefully positions the waterproof barrier sheets. The final layer is asphalt shingles, which have become the go-to choice because they bend without breaking, don't cost a fortune, hold up against weather, and go on without too much hassle. Workers position each strip of roofing material with precision, securing them in place with air-powered nail guns. The layered arrangement they create isn't just for looks, it's engineered to channel water away from the structure effectively. Meanwhile, there's critical work happening around the two chimneys that punch through the roof. These aren't just cosmetic features, they're essential pathways for air circulation and exhaust gases. Here's where things get technical. Anywhere a chimney meets an angled rooftop, you've got a natural weak spot where water loves to sneak in. That's why the crew installs an elaborate barrier system using shaped metal pieces and specialized waterproof layers. With the exterior sealed up tight, the focus turns inward. After all, nobody wants to live in a house that looks great but feels miserable. Before any finished floor goes down, the concrete base underneath needs serious attention. The surface gets cleaned and leveled until it's absolutely flat. A coating gets rolled on that penetrates the concrete's tiny holes. There's another benefit. This treatment acts as a barrier against moisture that might otherwise rise up through the concrete, a real problem for certain floor materials that don't handle dampness well. Beneath each individual plank sits a layer of adhesive, spread with a special ridge tool that leaves controlled lines. This technique guarantees contact across the entire back surface and prevents hollow spots that might crack when someone walks over them or when temperatures shift.
The installation follows an offset arrangement that resembles traditional wood floors. It's not just about appearances. This layout actually helps spread weight more efficiently. Now let's head outside, where the landscaping is going to be a real showstopper. Preparing this much outdoor space is a massive undertaking. What happens here affects more than just curb appeal, it influences how water moves across the property. Done right, this groundwork actually protects the foundation by managing rainfall and runoff properly. Workers haul away debris, chunks of stone, buried root systems, leftover construction scraps. By customizing the soil treatment this way, you're creating the perfect conditions for plants to thrive. The acidity gets balanced out, nutrients become easier for roots to absorb, and beneficial bacteria start colonizing the ground. All of this sets up a foundation that keeps plants healthy for years to come. They sculpt gradual inclines that let rainwater flow naturally, while giving the property that organic rolling feel you want in a landscape. Around trees, garden beds, and footpaths, they're extra careful with how they shape things. Everything needs to be stable and easy to navigate. When the grading work wraps up, they spread a smooth layer of quality topsoil across the area to prepare for grass. The sod they use is basically mature lawn that's already established on its own root system and soil layer. You'll notice the house is almost finished, and the timing couldn't be better. Working in heavy snow would bring everything to a standstill. The last major task for the exterior is putting in the hardscaping. Getting ready for pavement takes serious prep work. The crew digs down to the proper depth, making room for both the surface material and the foundation layers underneath. While laying everything down, they use spacers to keep the joints consistent, giving materials room to expand and contract with temperature changes. After all the pavers are positioned, they sweep fine sand. Filling these spaces creates friction between the pieces, essentially locking them together so nothing shifts around. These paved areas around the perimeter do a lot of heavy lifting. They channel water away from the foundation, give you solid footing in any season. But maybe most importantly, they draw a clean line that pulls the whole property together. The house and garden stop feeling like separate elements and start working as one unified space. When you look at how everything comes together, you can see the attention to detail at every stage, where function and beauty aren't competing priorities. They're completely intertwined. The way raw earth becomes a thriving, carefully planned landscape shows Legion Craft's complete approach to outdoor spaces.